of sorts. Uh, I guess when uh, you worked with uh, no, Bradshaw, it's, it's true. I'm black, and it's. There, there's a legend going around or a rumor that when you guys worked with uh, Simmons and Bradshaw, they worked real stiff with you guys in the first match there to send a message. What are your uh, thoughts on that or response? Well, ask Ron and Bradshaw the message that we sent them that night. Right. The message was reciprocated tenfold. We knew damn well that we were going to get tested our first night in, or well, our first angle in with the Acolytes because of what Public Enemy had done before we got there. See, Public Enemy left a really bad taste in people's mouths. And their final night there, or their final couple matches, Ron and John beat the shit out of them. We came in with a perception of these guys are going to be worse than the Public Enemy. So we got in there the first night, and the, st the story goes like this. We were supposed to hit the ring and hit him with two-by-fours. To hit a guy with a two-by-four, make it look good, and not hurt somebody really bad is very difficult because a two by four is such an awkward, uh, you know, just it's just awkward to do. So I was I was like Demon. There's no way in hell that it, it's our first night. We have to cream these guys. We gotta hit them as hard as we can. But oh, I don't want to do it. He was like, I don't want to do that to Ron Simmons or you know, whatever. So we went up to Ron Simmons and I said, Mr. Simmons, you think maybe it would be better if, instead of two by fours? And he cut me off. He goes. You do know how to work a two by four, don't you? Yes, sir, Mr. Simmons. Yes, we do. So yes, yes, <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we'll work it. And I told Diamond, I said, we're not working shit. Hit him as hard as you can, <laughs> and we'll deal with it later. Because we knew we were going to get it back anyway. But to be quite honest with you, remember where we came from for the past four years. What the fuck were they going to do to us that we haven't had tenfold on to us? We beat the crap out of each other that night. They beat us up worse than we beat them up. But at the end of the night, when all was said and done, we shook their hands, we said thank you, we hugged them. Right then and there, we earned our respect in the locker room. Not only that, but we've been close ever since. Memories of your matches with uh, Jeff and Matt, the Hardys? It's probably, like, like I was saying earlier, you know, some of the greatest tag team matches. You know, you can't, I don't even remember my matches with them because they were all so good. We yeah. tore the house down in every fucking city in America and, and in countries, and the chemistry was there. Good looking baby faces against disgusting ugly heels. It's wrestling one on one. It's black hat, it's white hat, it's good guys, it's bad guys. <laughs> See I was that was cool when you said good looking, you know, baby faces, but when you said disgusting ugly heels, I mean, you know, I was I was always considered a handsome, good looking, rugged in a way type of guy, you know. Very well dressed, well mannered, you know, the whole line. He actually believes all this horse shit. <laughs> Matt Hardy actually said in his book he liked the matches with you guys, but uh, Bubba was somebody that he wasn't really interested in hanging out with outside the ring. Was there any tension between you and Matt? I was shocked. I, I think I, I, I never read too much into that statement. I just think that we would never, uh, we would never hang out at the same places. I would never sit on Matt Hardy's couch and have a conversation with him or play a video game with him or listen to the music that he did. And plus, he eats with his hands, so I think that's disgusting. <laughs> you guys, you had the greatest... No, no, really, he eats with his hands. Really? He has no idea what fucking knives and forks are. He <laughs> eats with his hands. Yes or no? Next Don't question. lie. Next question. Yeah, you know it's the truth. I'm not getting into that. WrestleMania 2000, you guys had one of the you know best matches of all time there. Um, take us through that match with uh, you, the Hardys, Edge, and Christian. Who put the match together? Was it a combination? We all, we all did. I know Michael Hayes helped us uh, because he was our agent at the time. Uh, a lot of nerves, a lot of pressure. You know, we wanted to prove that that was the match that was either going to make us or break us because, uh, you know, we had to prove that we could definitely hang with the big boys and we can definitely be have a match that would compare to, you know, such matches like The Rock and Austin or what have you, you know. So it was a lot of pressure at that time. And uh, I know a lot of nerves because I had never really, I mean, we've dealt you know, of course, with tables, ladders, and chairs, and all the time. But at that point, I think it had been almost a year, maybe two years. So my body got a little soft, you know. So I was, I was just afraid of getting hit with ladders and chairs and tables. But you know, when the smoke cleared, you know, we had our hands up, and you know, that was actually not even the first TLC match. That was just a ladder right, match. Right. right. That, that's where the idea for TLC was was born. And uh, I remember I came up with the idea for the scaffold of death which was a hellacious, hellacious thing to try to pull off. And they pulled it off great at Christian, and Matt took a great bump off top, shattered the fucking table for the finish. Went really well. 
Uh, and and you know, Vince, Vince stepped in shit when he found the three of us, when he found these three teams. And he's a smart businessman. He realized, even though tag team wrestling is not my first priority, I have to take advantage of this situation. Because not only is it hard enough to find two teams that gel well with each other, shit, he's got three. Did you guys become uh, pretty much WWE superstars after that match? Did you guys realize that it was going to change for you guys? I knew I was a WWE superstar when my face was on a billboard in Times Square 50 feet tall. <laughs> That's how I knew. Me and Devon in the middle of Times Square. The only other wrestler to be on a billboard in Times Square was Steve Austin. Wow. Like at what point did you guys actually say I made it? Would that be the time? No, I think when you... financially because the numbers are right in there and then you realize that you, your dream as a kid was to always wrestle for the WWF so it's been and fulfilled it, you, you've done it now you, you know but then again don't always you know 